country without oil of its own, Israel is inventing unique ways for powering its vehicles. You see the full batteries waiting, and the empty place for, for the battery comes underneath the car. So instead of plugging in and charging overnight, you drive into a station, your electric car gets a full, fresh battery, and off you go. A look at Israel's quest for energy independence and security, and what America might learn. Plus, the power of motion, kinetic energy, and the innovative ways to capture it. From producing electricity through brakes to shock absorbers, American inventors are coming up with ways to harness otherwise wasted energy. And in our mix, a mix of innovations. Since butanol can work with gasoline engines, I can put this fuel into the car and make it go. Revving up America's energy future with new ideas. This is Energy Now. Hello everyone, I'm Thalia Shuris. Welcome to Energy Now, a weekly look at America's energy challenges and what we're doing about them. Figuring out how to decrease our dependence on foreign oil is one of the biggest challenges the U.S. faces. In large part, the country's national security depends on finding the answers. And no other nation understands those security concerns better than Israel, which just celebrated the 63rd anniversary of its independence. But Israel is still very dependent on other countries for almost all its energy needs. As one Israeli government official put it, we don't have diplomatic relations with most of the countries from which we import oil. And that makes Israel's energy challenges especially profound, oil and beyond. For example, in April, the pipeline that carries natural gas to Israel from Egypt was shut down after an attack in Egyptian territory, the second attack since the uprising in Egypt. It's this kind of external turmoil that has Israelis searching in every direction for alternatives to foreign fuel, alternatives that may end up helping the United States. Energy Now Chief Correspondent Tyler Suters recently traveled to Israel to explore the Israel connection. For every ancient overlook in Israel, a battle over land. Almost every adult, a soldier, past or present. For all the cars that need gasoline, tanks that demand diesel. Energy here is uh, something that we have to fight for, energy independence. Uzi Landau learned the value of energy serving in several Israeli governments. We have been promised that this is not only the holy land, the promised land, but this is the land of milk and honey. But I'm the minister responsible for water and for uh, uh, oil. We have no water, we have no oil. And yet, an international metropolis like Tel Aviv still runs 24-7, gobbling down energy, almost all of it coming from somewhere else. The Egyptian pipeline carries almost half of Israel's natural gas. Almost all of its coal comes from places like Australia and South Africa. And close to 100% of Israel's oil is imported. Of course, you also need electricity. You can see uh, the colors are presenting which feeder fits this uh, ITS. Kobe Yahav took me behind the scenes at Israel Electric into one of its transmission nerve centers. The corporation powers about two and a half million Israeli homes, all of them living under a constant threat from Middle East neighbors that can't abide Israel's very existence. We are used to this situation. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not new for us. We know that uh, we have to build a system that is uh, very resilient uh, uh, to attacks, uh, cyber attacks and all other kinds of attacks. In the U.S., if we have really high demand for power during a heat wave or say something goes wrong, like a blackout, well, we can always pull power from Canada. Israel is no bigger than New Jersey. It has just the one grid system. Problem is, Israel has no other country connected to its grid. We are not like the US or Europe whereby you can uh, take uh, energy from other, other countries when you have shortage. So basically we rely on our own generation. I think it's uh, affecting uh, the grid the reliability in the transmission level because we don't have any interconnections between us and other countries. So Does that mean no backup? No backup for generation. But now more and more of Israel's generation is coming from its own resources. 
After burning oil products for decades to get electricity, Israeli power plants, like this one in Ashdod, they're using more and more natural gas from Israel to generate that electricity. Deep in the Mediterranean Sea, Israel has discovered huge natural gas reserves, the Leviathan Field, the only significant fossil fuel in the entire country. Some of these fields have been in development for a decade now, but the most recent discovery made just last year, it may be the biggest field yet. A major objective is to, as quickly as we can, develop those natural gas uh, fields and connect them to the state uh, gas pipeline. Within two decades, Israel should have enough to eliminate the need for Egyptian supplies to ease Israeli reliance on another country for energy. Israel also has another domestic energy resource, even more ancient than fossil fuels, the sun, ever abundant in Israel's desert. This is the country's very first solar panel field ever to deliver electricity to Israel's grid system. Promising? Yes. Practical? No. Not yet. Not enough to make Israel energy secure. Not enough to significantly boost Israel's reserve of electricity. Our uh, reserve is very, very uh, low. Our reserve is about 8 to 9 percent. By about reserve, you mean the difference between supply and demand? Between peak demand and uh, supply. Demand that will grow exponentially under one potential energy solution. Israeli entrepreneur Shai Agassi envisions millions of electric cars on Israel's roads. The passion that I started from was peace in the Middle East. For Agassi, Israel's best. conflict became a crucible. Like Uzi Landau, he understands that oil is power. We were the first ones who actually looked at the systems question. Mm -hmm. How would you run a country without oil? And that's a question the U.S. is asking as well. The company Better Place is Agassi's answer. His effort to get Israel's cars off of foreign oil and on to electricity. It's all automated. And this, this is the key to Agassi's objective, a system of charging stations, not just re-energizing electric car batteries, but actually trading them out for you when you're running out of juice. As you see the full batteries waiting, mm -hmm. and the empty place for, for the battery comes underneath the car. And you'll see it coming up to the bottom of the battery. So instead of plugging in and charging overnight, you drive into a station, your electric car gets a full, fresh battery, and off you go. What will the turnaround time be for this? In Tokyo, we did it in 59 seconds, 59.1 seconds. Going to guess less than a minute. Less than a minute. But if Better Place gets its battery stations all over Israel, the effect on imported oil could be enormous. If they're successful, then obviously this is going to pick up elsewhere in the world as one of the possible answers to the dependence uh, on oil. And an answer, Landau believes, to questions about energy security in both Israel and America. It's basically a way by which one can defeat terror, defeat Al-Qaeda, defeat the Iranians, without basically shooting one bullet. No bullets, no bombs, but a fight for independence nonetheless. Tyler Suters joins us now to sum this up. And Tyler, what is the connection between the U.S. and Israel on a practical level towards solutions? So, Ali, I think there are several at play right now. For one, Noble Energy, based in Houston, Texas. This is a company that's helping develop Israel's offshore gas fields. Also, Israeli solar energy companies, they are very eager to prove their technologies here in the U.S. market. They consider this hitting the big time. And Kobe Yahav from Israel Electric's Nerve Center, he is working with U.S. companies on improving grid security. In fact, Yahav told me he is in Minnesota so often right now, Thalia, he's actually becoming a Vikings fan. Should I say poor guy? I mean, you got to do what you got to do, right? <laughs> Depends on what your team is, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I do want to mention, Thalia, in the weeks ahead, I'll be taking a more in-depth look at the huge natural gas fines off of Israel's coast and what that means for the country. Also, Israel's push to solar energy and what is some very cool energy innovation taking place in Israel right now. I'm looking forward to all of it. Thanks, Tyler. Thank you, Thalia. And as you heard in Tyler's piece, Israel considers itself a desert island amid oil-rich nations. But there was a time when oil looked promising for Israel, when it hit black gold, inspiring nationwide celebrations. Check out this energy then from 1955. Now for Israel's good news. They've struck oil. 
The word spread rapidly and people were soon on the spot to see if the rumor were true. After years of search, Israel's first gusher has produced oil from a depth of about 4,000 feet. If its promise is fulfilled, the discovery will have vast economic and political importance. Too early to judge yet, but let's have a couple of pints. Well, the euphoria didn't last long, and Israel's oil production really only amounts to a trickle. According to the CIA World Factbook, Israel produced only 3,800 barrels of oil per day in 2009, but it used 231,000 barrels every day. Coming up, energy innovations here at home. We'll show you some of the ideas which were declared winners in a national contest and talk to one man who has a plan to change the way you power your home. But first, all that bouncing up and down when you're driving that seems to shatter your bones, it's actually a powerful source of energy. We generate electricity from bumps in the road. We use electricity for fuel economy gains. Capturing the kinetic energy of a bumpy ride. That's next. How can we reduce our dependence on oil? Imagine if we could harness all this kinetic energy. Who is shaping our energy future? China will produce more than half the solar panels in the entire world. If you've got good quality batteries, you can then store the wind when there's no wind, store the solar when there's no solar. Energy Now is the only TV news magazine exploring our challenges. Hybrid technology has saved the military $250 million. It makes sense to make this shift now. Energy Now on ABC7. The Asthma and Allergy Foundation of America has important information for the millions of people with asthma. You may not know there are two main causes of asthma symptoms, airway constriction you feel and inflammation you may not feel. Learn how to better manage your asthma by treating both main causes of asthma symptoms. Treating both causes can help prevent symptoms before they even start. And preventing symptoms could mean a smoother ride. For more information, go to asthma.com. The high gas prices we're seeing across the country are causing a lot of frustration and not to make you even more angry, but here goes. Did you know that only about 15% of that liquid gold actually spins the wheels? Sad but true. Combustion engines are so inefficient that the rest, 85%, is lost as heat or friction. Still, there might be some changes coming for vehicles and trains too. New technologies that capture the energy of motion. More from Energy Now's Josh Zepps in this Energy Next. Have you ever been on a train and accidentally spilled your coffee on a total stranger? I know I have. See, it happens because the train moves around in all kinds of ways that have nothing to do with actually getting you where you want to go. But imagine if we could harness all this kinetic energy and use it to light the train's lights and maybe even to brew more coffee to throw on yet more strangers. Do you like that idea? Huh? Kinetic energy is the energy of motion. We generate a lot of it in this hectic modern world, and almost all of it goes to waste. But a new class of crafty kinetic capturers is changing that. Philadelphia's metro system is run by SEPTA, the Southeastern Pennsylvania Transportation Authority. Chief Power Officer Andrew Gillespie wanted to save a buck on the $12 million in electricity his trains guzzle every year, so he modified the train's brakes to generate electricity as they slow down. We probably use 30% of the regenerate power. The existing trains can use it to power the lights, uh, heaters and such. Doors are closing. What we want to do now is take that energy, uh, which is electricity, send it back through the power distribution system, which supplied the power to the train in the first place, and store it. That's the key, storing it. See, normally when you capture a train's kinetic energy, you can either use it to power onboard systems or feed it back into the supply system to be sucked up by another train that needs it in that same split second. But if it isn't used instantly, it's gone. So in this cavernous room at the Letterly Power substation, SEPTA is installing an enormous 1,000 kilowatt battery to store the energy harvested from its braking trains. Whenever it's needed, that stored energy can be sent to other trains, reducing energy waste, reducing costs, and reducing emissions. Is this kind of technology going to be widespread through transit systems in the United States? Oh, I'm sure it will be. I mean, we're not the only ones who are looking at this. Um, it's a technology that's um, 
just in its infancy, but there's so much power that's not being captured right now. Now stopping and starting are not the only ways we waste kinetic energy. Anytime you move fast over an unsmooth surface, you bounce up and down. Vehicles are bumpy. It's why shock absorbers were invented. And now they're being reinvented by a pair of kinetically inspired MIT grads at Levant Power in Massachusetts. Essentially what we uh, do is we generate electricity from bumps in the road. We use electricity for fuel economy gains. So the system works by actually shuttling fluid through a hydraulic motor, which spins a generator. So as it moves up and down, as your wheel moves up and down, it spins an electric generator, and that generates electricity. Electricity that can power the vehicle's headlights, stereo, GPS, butt warmer in the seat if you're lucky, all things that would ordinarily drain power from the engine. They call this shock absorber GenShock, and its output ranges from tens of watts to several kilowatts. That translates to gas savings of 1 to 5 percent, depending on the type of vehicle and terrain. So this is mimicking the motion of a road as you drive faster and go over all kinds of potholes. This is generating power, which is going to a bank of lights behind me that you can see flashing. When the car's going really fast, you can almost have a rave. Of course, the heavier the vehicles, the bigger the energy return. So Levant is getting a lot of interest from heavy fleet operations. So we're working with the US Army, and they actually they shipped us out a uh, military Humvee, an 1152, that we're actually doing a uh, installation on. So we have the Humvee out back. You have a Humvee? Yeah. Here? Yep. We wow. It's amazing to think that this could be the prototype vehicle from which all of the Army's Humvees could be fitted. So they need to use less power, less energy, be more efficient, and also a nicer ride, which would be nice. This is not the, this is no Lexus. And in the context of capturing energy, that's a good thing. The beauty of kinetic energy is that because it's everywhere, you can capture it in myriad ways. If you're dealing with urban rail, which stops and starts all the time, harness the brakes. If you're dealing with a workhorse that bounces along rough terrain, harness the shock absorbers. The modern world's incessant bouncing, braking and bumping is an almost unlimited energy source going to waste right under our nose. Thankfully, not for much longer. I think when we look back on it, we're going to realize um, how uh, inefficient we were. At some point, you know, it'll be illegal to waste energy as heat. But don't go using gen shocks as a reason to get a hummer. I'm just saying. In Cambridge, Massachusetts, Josh Zepps, Energy Now. Levant Power expects to have a product on the market in 2012 and tells us that it has also figured out how to use some of GenShock's power for a smoother ride and better handling performance so you can save on gas and prevent coffee spills. <laughs> Coming up, more energy innovators. Can a microscopic one-celled plant create gas on a commercial scale? and the results of a national contest to determine America's energy innovators of the year. I'm Ed Begley Jr. and I remember what my lungs felt like as a kid growing up and playing outside in polluted air. I'm concerned about air pollution and I'm fighting for our right to breathe healthy air. That's why I volunteer with the American Lung Association. Imagine how bad our air would be without the American Lung Association. Get involved. Contact your nearest American Lung Association at lungusa.org or 800-586-4872. Welcome back to Energy Now. You know, ridding the country of its dependence on oil will largely depend on new energy ideas and inventions and whether they can succeed off the drawing board. That promise of innovation is why Planet Forward, a website and TV show dedicated to energy and sustainability, recently held a nationwide contest to determine the country's top energy innovators. 
the brains and spirit behind Planet Forward joins us for the mix. Frank Cesno is here to talk about some of those innovations and their potential. It's good to have you here. Well, it's great to be here. Well, we've all covered this. Energy Now, I mean, that's our mandate as well. These right. innovations, there are so many out there, but how would you describe the breadth and the scope of the innovations out there? Oh, it's, it's really breathtaking. Um, and that's what's exciting about it, because it, the innovations range from the technology to the policy behind them to the behaviors that they would uh, instigate and I think that's where you get real hope when you see the kinds of things that people are coming up with to change a business model to make something uh, gain traction better to investigate a new technology to take us into a new energy field most of these are not going to be overnight flip the switch and it's suddenly a, a new day I mean we are in this transition phase as we know but we are such a, a remarkably innovative species to see it unleashed and like this is, is just very exciting. Absolutely true and we're going to look at a couple of your finalists yeah. so let's let's take a look at one and uh, you know some of Planet Forward's top innovators had to do with algae and the production of kinds of fuel so one of the uh, organizations that put together a plan essentially created gas so let's take a look okay. Once the algae matures in ponds it's separated from water by a centrifuge creating a thick algae paste. And that paste gets fed into this test plant extractor that uses green solvents to crack open the algae cells and release oil. The result is green crude, but is it cost effective? Right now, algae costs roughly $7 per gallon, or $300 a barrel. But Sapphire will open a new 300-acre test plant in 2012, the largest in the nation. By producing one million gallons per year, they predict the price will drop. So, Frank, that's that's green crude, which is going right. to become essentially gasoline right. into into, into right. our cars, which is what I meant before. Um, what do you think really is the possibility that that this is going to go into a grand scale? I mean, your opinion. My opinion is it's got a long way to go, and what what they're saying and what they freely admit is they've got to get it to scale. They've got to they've got to turn out hundreds of thousands of barrels to bring the price way down to make it competitive. Now. Bill Gates is an investor in this thing, and 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 so they've got some powerful that money, means a lot. And powerful money, and powerful brains behind it. Uh, algae biofuel is very attractive. It r roughly can uh, put out 15 times more oil, or the equivalent of oil, as other biofuels, corn or 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 even cellulosic ethanol. So there's a there's a lot of upside to it. There are a lot of factors in here. I, I'm going to stick with algae because one of your other finalists, right. you know, actually produced a type of alcohol fuel. Right. Um, we've taken a look at this as well, but I, I want to show that clip, and this is really fascinating. Yeah. This is our prototype butanol production unit that is currently under construction. It's really as simple as loading algae into this component here, pressing a red button, and three days later, you'll have finished butanol coming out of this valve. And since butanol can work with gasoline engines, I can put this fuel into the car and make it go. For farmers and others, maybe a lean, green revenue stream. Okay, so that was fun. I like the little go-kart, but wait a minute, you know, there's not much leg room no, <laughs> for, no, no. for us. So, so, little, so what's the crap, reality but it's easy again? To park. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. So again, this goes to viability. Your thoughts? Well, first of all, I love these these this this team. This is a team that's working with a professor, uh, Jamie Hestikin is his name, out of the University of Arkansas. And they're like a bunch of detectives. Mm. And they are getting into the science of this stuff in such a great way that they are, you know, filling their brains with knowledge while they're trying to, to crack a code here. They're trying to create this machine. It would cost about 25 grand. You're a farmer. You're, you're, you have dried algae. You can shovel this stuff into this thing and it will ferment and you will get this butanol fuel out of it. Their objective here is to work on the pricing of this thing so there's payback on the unit within about five years that would make it competitive. Well, I'm glad you brought up pricing because we're going to bring up your innovator of the year. He is yeah. Danny Kennedy. He is in San Francisco and he is the founder of Sungevity, which actually leases the sun. Pretty good deal there. Explain that to us for uh, to our audience for us, Danny. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thanks to Frank and Planet Forward too. Basically, we're able to lease you a solar system, make it really easy to actually get it. One of the innovations we were recognized for is a software that allows us to design and engineer the system 
remotely through uh, satellite and aerial photographs before even having to come to your house. And then when you get the system on the house, you pay us monthly, like your electricity bill now. You just have to put no money down and instead take on a contract with us for solar electricity. And it's Let me interrupt you because you, you just said no money down and that's the key because you're depending on tax credits. What happens if that money runs out, Danny? Well, those tax credits are in law until 2016 and you know, you've heard President Obama talking about shifting the subsidies that the oil and gas boys get towards clean energy. We're pretty confident those will remain. And the other driver is simply economics. The fact of the matter is grid electricity is rising in cost for a variety of reasons. Mm -hmm. Solar electricity is falling in cost. And financing it is actually the key. You know, the way it will get to ubiquity like cell phones is being able to pay for the service on a contract rather than having to pay for it up front. That's kind of like buying your electricity for 25 years in one hit. Mm -hmm. Instead, we make it a no deposit proposition that you can pay as you go for with the solar lease. Frank is nodding his head here, and, and, and is that the key, and, and, and what did you think of this? Well, well, I think the idea is a very interesting one, because what Danny has done, and this is what the audience recognized and why the Planet Forward audience voted for this to be the most innovative idea of the finalist ideas that were, that were presented, is that Danny has tackled both a financing innovation and a technology innovation in one package here. But the big thing is, if I want to buy a solar system for, um, and panels from my roof, Depending on where I live, I'm going to need to shell out somewhere between maybe ten and twenty thousand dollars. That's a very substantial barrier to entry. The key thing, it's all about costs. Danny, again, congratulations. And Frank, very quickly, uh, what's next for you? We're going to start looking at what smart communities need mm. to do to build and adapt to a changing planet. That's energy, that's transportation, that's technology, that's archi architecture, that's infrastructure. And we're looking for innovations across the board, and we'll be doing more shows and picking more innovators. Okay, we'll have you back. I I'm sure. look forward to it. All right, Thanks. thank you very much to both of you. And one more innovation, something that did not actually get submitted to Frank's challenge, but something that hit our radar screen and made it into the Energy Now hot zone. This is a battery-powered plane. It's called the Electra One, and its batteries are charged by solar panels on the roof of its hangar. Made by Germany's PC Aero company, the one-seater has completed a successful 30-minute test flight. But the goal is to have it fly up to five hours. Not only that, the company is working on versions that the CEO says he plans to offer as the world's first electric business flights. Hmm. So maybe a flight of fancy or maybe the future of corporate executive travel. And that's it for this week's Energy Now. Remember, you can follow us on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter by searching Energy Now News. I'm Thalia Shuras. We'll see you next week. And we leave you with one more innovation that was up for consideration for Planet Forward's Innovators of the Year, but didn't quite make it. The sustainable dance floor developed four years ago in the Netherlands. Dance moves are converted into electricity, which powers the lights and the stereo system, actually. And you guessed it, the more people, the more jumping up and down, the more power. Hope you enjoy your weekend. Thank <laughs> you.